Today I'm going to be sharing with you the project that we do at school with our grade eights. We're going to be making these boxer shorts. Um, they're super easy, nice, perfect beginner project. And if you cut them out the right way that I'm going to show you, you'll have enough left over to make a cute drawstring bag. You can use any pattern that you can find for boxer shorts or even um, pajama pants or sweatpants and you'll just cut them off short to be the length that you want. The one that we're making fits perfectly on one meter of fabric. So you'll need one meter of fabric of a, like a flannelette and then you'll need enough one inch wide elastic just to fit snugly around your waist. You'll need matching thread and a sewing machine. So if you've got all that, let's get started. So if you're a beginner and you're not sure how to thread your machine or how to use your machine, please check out my video of how to get started sewing. Okay, in this video I'm not going to show you how to thread the machine. Um, I've already done it in that one, so take a look there. So for the people in my class, you'll be able to find this PDF pattern um, linked on our Google Classroom. And you'll print that out, it's 12 pages, uh, and you'll tape it all together. So once you've got your 12 pages printed, you're going to take the first six and they are for the front and so you can see that's labeled page number one two and you'll lay them out like one two three four five six but now you have to be pretty precise in how you lay these all out okay and this line here is where page three is going to overlap it and see the two little notches there two and two go together it would be very easy to get this a little bit crooked right so I want to make sure I've got it just as straight as I can get it. And then I'll put a piece of tape. Okay, on page two and four, this line is going to tuck under so that page one just overlaps page two right at that spot like that. Okay, so with I'm just going to tape the rest of the pieces together and then you're going to use paper scissors and you'll cut out right on your size line. So the measurements, we'll post the measurements as well, so in terms of how big a small is, how big a medium is, um, and we're just going to be going by your hip measurement because the waist is going to get brought in with the elastic anyway. Okay, there's the whole front. Now the back goes like this. Same idea. Page 7, page 8, page 9, page 10, page 11, page 12. depending on what size you're going to do um, you'll cut this all out this this edge here is for all sizes and then it breaks down to the into all the sizes here so you'll follow your curve um, and cut out for your size use paper scissors to cut out your pattern pieces not your good fabric scissors so this is the fabric I'm going to use it is 45 inch wide flannelette cotton flannelette and I'm going to take that and refold it so that the good side or the right side is in the middle. And I'm bringing the two selvage edges together. The cut edge is what's getting folded in half and the selvage edges are together. Lay that down on your work table and spend a minute smoothing it out, keeping the selvages together. So my fabric is smoothed out and the fold is here towards me and I want to put the point of these curves toward that fold. That's how I'm going to have enough scrap left over to make the drawstring bag. The other thing I want to have in place is this. This is the grain line and I want to have that parallel to the fold. So I want to make sure I get these both fitting nicely on here and they just make it onto the one meter of fabric. And then to make sure that that grain line is parallel, I'm going to measure from one end of the grain line to the fold and the other end. I need to tip it a bit like that. Good. 
So I'll double check this one too. Now I'm gonna start pinning this. So on a, on a paper pattern, I just wanna push the pin in. At school, sometimes we use the heavy, like hard paper patterns. We don't pin that, we trace around it. But on a paper pattern like this, you can just poke your pin in all the layers and bring your pin right back out into the paper. So I like to pin about every hand width apart, right? And I like to have the head of the pin at the edge of the paper. Definitely all corners need to be pinned down and around the curves. Now, we're gonna be cutting right beside this paper. So make sure none of your pins stick out past it because we wanna pin, we wanna cut right at that line. So I can't pin like that. I have to push the pin in so that it's not hanging over the edge. And this section back here, that'll make the drawstring for the drawstring bag. These are good fabric shears. Um, they are flat on the bottom, they're sheer. Your scissors should be riding right along the top of the table. You don't pick things up to cut. You wanna keep all those layers nice and flat. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second thing is squeeze the blades together as you cut. You should hear that sound. Um, if you don't squeeze the blades together, sometimes it just kind of bends the fabric. You'll find that. I see that in my students a lot of times. They're like, these scissors don't work. They're just mushing the fabric. Well, it's because you have to kind of squeeze the blades together as you cut. Okay, so I'm going to be cutting right beside that pattern now. And I'm going to make a long, smooth cut and then slide the blades right into that cut. Nice and smooth. If I can't, if it's too awkward that way, I'll come around the other side. Now notice on the edge of the pattern, there are these little notches. I want you to just take the tip of your scissor and slip in at that notch. Those notches carry information of how we're gonna be piecing this together. And here's one more of those notches. I'm just gonna stick there. Okay, on the back there's a double notch. See that? Snip, and that's the back. And that's how you can tell your pieces apart from each other. When you go to sew, you know that the two notches at the center back means back. The center front has a single notch. The front also has a smaller scoop in the back. The back has the bigger scoop. So I'm gonna take out all my pins. I don't need the pattern piece attached anymore. And once my pins are out, I'm gonna leave these together the way I've cut it, put the good side in, the right sides together, because that's our first sewing step. In fact, I could take a few of my pins back and put them in that curve on the front and the back. I can take pins and put them along this curved edge, again, about every hand width apart, and with my pin going in and back out. If I just put my pin in and stab it through, that doesn't hold anything, right? So I have to go in and back out of the fabric. And I make sure that I'm keeping it as I cut it. The edges are together and the notches together. So just keep it exactly how you cut it. And that's our first sewing step, is we're just gonna be sewing from that corner around the curve to this corner, not down here yet. So get your machine threaded and we'll see you at the machine. So when we're sewing, we always want the edge on our right. And we're going to be lining that up with the, the 5 8 line or the 15 line, which is 15 millimeters from the needle. And your edge of your fabric is going to just go to the edge of the 15 line. This top edge of the fabric is going to just go to the needle. Sometimes I see my students starting like this where you're missing the whole first inch. You want to bring it back so you're just starting with the edge of your fabric at the needle. Take out your first pin. And we're using just a regular straight stitch. I'm going to start with just a few stitches and then do a back tack. So I'm hitting the back button. Okay, so coming along at the 15 line, there's my back tack is done. 
so my eye stays right there that's how I sew straight is just keeping my eye right there and my hands steer when I come to the pins I just take those out and now here when I'm coming to the curve all you do is you just straighten out your fabric Whatever you're holding in front of the needle is where you're going to go. And my eye is going to continue to guide that curve right along that 15 line. Take out that pin. Go right to the end. And back tack. I'm going to do the same for the back. I have a cutting button on here, which I quite like. But if you don't have a cutting button, after your back tack, you're just going to hit needle up or turn your wheel to bring your needle up, lift up and pull out about six inches of thread and then use your thread cutter. Tuck your threads back in between the toes and bring your thread off to the right. Okay, same thing on the back, same straight stitch. Now, to this edge will just fray, especially when you wash it. All of those little threads will come out. So to finish the edge, um, we're going to use a zigzag stitch. If you take Fashion 9 next year, we'll get you onto the sergers. But grade 8s, we're going to be doing zigzag. Basic zigzag with the length and width at 3. And now for the zigzag, I basically want the needle to be going off the fabric and back on, and off the fabric and back on, off and on, so that it's holding all those little threads and stopping them from fraying. I'm still going to start and stop with a back tack. And I'm just guiding that edge right toward the needle. Okay, great. So those two edges are both sewn and zigzagged. Um, and we're trying to build in some good habits right from the start here. So the good habits are always do your back tacks at the beginning and end of every seam. Always finish all your edges as you go with a zigzag or later with a serger. Um, trim your threads as you go as well. Um, if you leave all of your threads to the end, it's just yucky. <laughs> just trim your threads as you go. Um, and next good habit to build in is press your seams as you go. So we're going to take these pieces and open them out flat. Open them out flat like that. And you're going to press that seam allowance to one side. It doesn't matter which side. Um, and you really only do the straight part once you get into the curve. It's not going to go to one side easily. But the straight part we want to press to one side. So I've got my piece laying right side down onto the ironing board. And the iron is heating up at a cotton setting. So see here at the straight part, I'll be able to flatten that out at the curve. I don't really want to mess around with that. Good. So I'm just going to push that seam allowance to one side and give it a shot of steam. If I've got creases in my fabric, which I do, now is a good time to get these out. These creases will be much easier to get out now than they would later. Just a bit of safety with the iron. Remember that that steam is really hot, so you don't want to get too close to it. Um, the other thing is, is that we never leave the iron just laying down like that, right? We never walk away with the iron down because um, that can definitely burn the ironing board. I'm going to lay this one down, down right side up now and then do the same press to my back. I like to use steam. It really gives you a good press. If you're reluctant to use steam, that's totally fine. So here's the one that I've already sewn and pressed. And I'm going to take the other and put it right on top. So I'm bringing them right sides together. And can you kind of see how that's going to turn into shorts, right? There's the division between the legs. That's the inseam. This is the side seam. Right? And you might think they look huge now, but remember, we're going to be putting elastic in the top, so it's all going to bunch in like that. Okay? Alrighty. So my next step is to take those two side seams parallel to the seams that I just did, and we're going to pin that and sew that at the 15 line again. 
To do the side seams, I just want to really have my two side edges lined up nicely. So I want to bring the two corners together and put a pin. And then the other two corners together and put a pin. And then a couple pins in between. There's that side notch. That can get matched up. And the edges, we want to make sure the edges are together as well. So if the edge does not want to go together, you be the boss and you make it go together. Good. So there's one side seam. I'm going to pin the other one as well. You'll notice that the back is wider than the front. And that's all right. That's meant to be because your back is wider than your front. You just make your edges come together even though that back is wider than the front. And then we'll go back to the machine and sew that at the 15 line, same way we did. It's going to be easier now though because it's straight. We'll sew at the 15 line and zigzag the edge. So the side seams are sewn and zigzagged and now I want to be able to press those side seams flat. So I'm going to take that center front and center back seam, the curved one, and pull that apart so now it's in this funny shape like that um, so that I can put this right over the ironing board and press my side seams flat. So this is coming right over as if I'm trying to dress the ironing board. And then I'm going to push that to one side. I like to press toward the back, so I'm going to look to see where that double notch is hiding. This is the back, so I'm going to be pushing my seam allowance toward the back. Get that nice and flat and do the same to the other side, also going toward the back. So those are nice and flat. And then the last seam we're going to do before we do our hems and casing is this little inseam. So I'm going to take that and open it right out and pin those two corners together. So corner to corner there, and corner to corner here. And then this little, where the seams come together, it's nice if one goes one way and one goes the other, but the important thing is that they are just nestled right together there. This one, I have to give it a bit of a tug and as much as I tried to make that pattern perfect, those notches are not quite matching. So I'm just going to give that a little bit of a tug and get that in together there. Okay. And now we're going to sew right through here. We're just going to ignore that that seams there and we'll go right through with the 15 line and then zigzag the edge just like we've been doing. Okay. So at the 15 line, straight stitch and then we'll zigzag the edge. Now here, the edges don't want to stay together, right? They want to spread apart here, but it's your job to keep them together. Also, sometimes you'll find that this wants to fold in and get caught in the seam. Keep it out of the way and just make sure you're just sewing your two layers. All of our seams are done and now we're going to turn the casing at the top for the elastic to go through and to make that nice we're going to be turning it a small fold first and then a three centimeter fold okay so let me show you how to press that and i'll just show you a, a mistake that um sometimes i see students making where they want to do their fold and then they let it go off to nothing at the seams like this and they try to get the whole thing all set up and then press it um, and that just doesn't really work out great. So we're going to take this top edge and move the back edge out of the way. So we're just working with one edge at a time. And we're going to go around the whole circle rather than trying to do it kind of in two lines. So with just that small fold, it's like the width of my pinky finger, pinky finger nail maybe. 
and I'm just going to make that small fold all the way around. And keeping this the way I pressed it and then keeping that little seam fold, even going right through the seam. The steam really get, does give a nice press, but I know it is a bit scary to use that steam. So you just keep making your way around that circle. So with that first fold done, let's just go back to the machine and sew close to that edge just to keep that first fold in place and then we'll come back and do the second turn. Back at the air now, and this is what's gonna help us make that next fold. This is a sewing gauge, and we're gonna slide that red arrow up to three centimeters, an inch and a quarter, um, and that's this, the depth of the second turn. So you can see now, this is nice and easy to work with now because that first turn is sewn down really nice and flat. Okay, there's our double notch, so I know this is the center back. And this, the center back is where we wanna leave a gap to be able to put the elastic in. Okay, so using that to measure three centimeters all the way around, and this time I'm gonna put some pins just to hold that flat. Now I might put a double pin at the beginning and end of this gap, just so I know I'm gonna start at one double pin, stop at the second double pin. I like to go to the next seam and bring that down so I know I'm nice and straight. This is lined up, I'm not kind of pulling it off one way or the other. So the seam is matched up here and I'm getting my three centimeters. And then I go back and do in between those two pins. That uh, looks good. So now I'm going to sew pretty much on that line or even closer to the edge if I want. And I'm going to go all the way around and stop at that double pin. So this will be the gap where I can put the elastic in. And now just to press that flat, now we can kind of do it all in one big line. And there's the gap for the elastic. Now, I cut my elastic to be the right size for a size small. Basically, you can, you can do it one of two ways. You can take your waist measurement and cut your elastic about 10 or 15 centimeters, four to six inches smaller than your actual waist measurement. Or you can just take your elastic and before you cut it, wrap it around your waist nice and snug. Snug that up, because it has to be able to fold up your shorts. So snug it up and just give yourself an inch overlap and cut there. Then you want to find a nice big safety pin. And you're going to take that safety pin and put it in the end of your elastic and we'll use the safety pin to push it through the case. So I've got my safety pin on the elastic and ready to push through here. So I'm going to just push, push, push and then pull the fabric back. Now I don't want, I don't want to get a twist in my elastic so I want to make sure that stays flat. Push, push, push and pull the fabric back. Now see this end? That can get easily lost inside there. I don't want to have that happen. So I'm gonna pin that to the seam on the outside. Okay, and I'm just gonna make my way around with the push, push, push. At the seams, what can happen is, sometimes you can be pushing your, your safety pin into the seam inside there. You can't see what you're doing, but you feel like it's stuck. You'll have to slide it back out and try to wiggle it in the space in between. So right here you kind of just have to wiggle it in between the layers good so you'll push it in between there you'll see what i mean if you feel like you're hitting a brick wall that's why it's because it's you're pushing it into the seam allowance okay 
you get back to the gap bring it out and pull and just give a little a little quick check all the way around and make sure your elastic is not twisted in there and then once you're satisfied that it's not twisted you're going to take your two ends you can unpin that one now pull them both out like that just so you have enough to work with and then you're just going to take your elastic and overlap it and with that overlap you'll just sew back and forth back and forth with sort of like back tacks going back and forth just to really secure that that's going to be a big point of tension so you want to make sure that is nice and secure the shorts are behind my machine and i just bring that overlap under the needle take the pin out make sure this is straight so that's pretty strong you'll just let it all go back into the shorts give the shorts a good stretch and then we're just going to sew this gap closed i want to try to line up my sewing with where i stopped there and and match it up to there so i'm kind of just connecting those two points threads so the top's all done now the hem at the bottom is exactly the same as what we did at the top with that small little fold to start with and then the deeper fold well let's do that small fold first and then we'll sew around it because that worked out really nicely so the small fold Remember, you're going all the way around the circle, right through the seam. We don't let it go off to nothing at the seam. Keep the back out of the way and just do the top layer. fold is done now I'm going to sew all the way around that edge and then come back to the iron when I sew the hem I want to start and stop at the inseam so that my back tacks are hidden in in the inseam I just don't like to see a back tack on a hem anywhere so that inseam is a good place to hide it Let's press those edges flat and then we'll do the second fold. Okay, so just like we did the top, except this time we're just turning a two centimeter fold or three quarters of an inch. And I'm gonna find that two centimeter mark and put a pin. I'm gonna pin all the way around and then I'll sew close to that top edge again. All nicely pinned. Now I'm gonna sew nice and close to that same line of stitching and I'm gonna start and stop at the inseam. So again, my back tack is gonna be hidden at the inseam. it for sewing all I need now is to trim off any threads I missed and then press this bottom crease flat trim your threads 
And then let's just give that bottom hem a final press. So nice and flat. bottom hem we've had the final press and now let's just turn it right side out and admire our awesome work there you go you guys thank you so much for watching with me i hope you make lots of fun boxer shorts and i hope you got some good skills from that too okay i hope you enjoy sewing and i hope to have you in fashion nine next year